Greetings. Apple just released Ventura Operating System version 13.2 and in this screen recording I'm going to talk about how I use Nudge combined with my Jamf software server and a race install to automate the updates of this operating system. So first we're looking at a screencast which shows what the user sees and one thing they are seeing is that in some cases and we don't know why um, a user who has a token in their volume is prompted for an admin username and password when Nudge asks them to update now. So what they need to do in this case is just go into self-service and run the erase install script which if configured to update will update the computer and in this configuration it's going to download the full installer which takes a lot longer however it's going to get it done and this is version 28 of erase install and we'll go into more of that later in the video so it's going to use this new swift dialog box which is kind of cool and we will see that it automatically has the username so they just need to type their login password. So using the power of editing to make this go faster, it starts by finding its operating system installer, then it downloads that. In this case, it's for Ventura 13.2, parentheses, 22, delta 49, close parentheses. And this download is going to happen a lot faster in this editing process than it happens in real life. This could take a long time for your clients if they have a slow internet connection and this is where their update video ends and so you know this is a video that I sent to all my users uh, who haven't updated so that they know that hey Nudge is telling you to update if you run into an admin password issue just take the longer pathway of going through self-service and that's kind of like part one of my process here so after that the Installer prepares, they acknowledge that with an OK, computer reboots and it installs the update uh, and it's good to go. So now let's transition to looking at the erase install, erase install uh, software on GitHub. We're looking at the wiki so we can see that version 28 was very recently published. Uh, it's January 31st at the time of this recording and you always in my opinion want to use the the new version uh, we can see that this one has a swift dialog box um, from another github user so that's super cool and it eliminates OSA script and a couple other things so looking at the Champ Pro method, which is what I use, is I'm just updating that package, downloading version 28 and uploading that to my Champ Pro instance. Next we have Nudge, and I'm not deep diving here. If you wanna see deep diving, do some searching of my uh, YouTube channel for my Mac admin playlist and just watch those videos for the deep dives. Okay, so here's Nudge. Uh, this repo was updated. Uh, June 5th, 2020, so not a lot of new things here. However, this is a good tool um, and it's what I'm using. And I've said this in other videos, I don't have the best nudge configuration, but I got it functional. And so we're gonna look at that a little bit today in the Jamf software server. So you can kind of see the pieces of the puzzle, see how we use nudge, how we use erase install, and how we use Jamf automate the update process of the computers within the fleet. To support that process, we can create smart groups and search filters to segment out the computers that need to be updated and the ones that haven't been updated. So in this case, we have a smart group that is showing all our computers that are not on the target operating system we're looking for, which is 13.2 and 13.2.0. And we can use this smart group to scope our policies and configuration profiles. So let's review some of these policies.
policies and then we'll do the configuration profile review. So of course we have our race install and I put the package number there now because the update frequency just makes it helpful. So we can see package number 28, so that's the newest version. And now we can see our file and processes command, which is force curl erase dash deb notify. Now if you read the documentation, you can see that some of those arguments are no longer valid. I'm leaving them in for now, the old ones, just for uh, testing purposes, but I'm also adding the new ones in. I've tested erase install on version 28 once. It worked like a charm on a test client. So now let's look at the erase install update parameters, which I use much more often. Uh, and here we can see the execute command with the arguments. And this is taking a little while to load, so we'll just pull down this command from the text editor, and I'll put it in the comments below if you want to copy and paste what I use for your own setup. So in our text editor, I have a file which shows what we had before and what we have after. We'll bring that in, and we can see on line four, we have the dash s fs, clean up after, power wait, uh, post install, jamf recon. So those configuration options are gonna do a lot of neat things. Once again, I'm gonna encourage you to read the documentation, just keyword search those things to figure out what they do and why they're important and if they're applicable to your environment. Every environment's a little different, so you know, I'm just showing you my tools in the toolbox and, and you know, kind of how I'm using them to get this job done. So next we're gonna audit our post install script, which is tied to our post install policy, which is different than a configuration profile. So for our targeted OS version, we need to update the completion date. I like to give my users three weeks, so this has been in production about one week. Their deadline is mid-February, so no surprises is the approach there. Just scrolling through this script fairly fast, but you know, copy it off GitHub, put it in a text editor, put it in a, a MDM like Jamf Pro, and test it out. After you've tested it and found what works for you, then Put it in production. So there's that. Just about down here, done here. This script is around 500 lines. So one thing I've done is uh, just added language to the text box that matches the needs of my organization. We saw that language at the beginning of this video, so jump back to that if you're curious to see what that looks like. So now we'll look for this nudge policy so we can see it on the policy side. And we can see our nudge launch package. There's, so you gotta have your package there and then our post install script. Now we'll check our scope and we can see that this is scoped to all our old OS's and then our new ones, everything that's on 13 but not 13.2 and 13.2.0. So this is in production live right now. Uh, it's got a ton of triggers because I want it to actively be running. We can scroll down and see some of those. I'm gonna fix this date here and update this version because I've changed it a little bit since the last recording. dates and version numbers on everything. So we can see our configuration. This is also available in self-service in the utilities menu. I find that helpful for um, debugging. If someone comes in with a problem, we want to launch this script, see what it looks like. Uh, and I always start them in testing as well. Let's go into our configuration profiles where I haven't updated things yet and uh, included these in the scope. And I'm going to speak to the reason for that why uh, now in the voiceover. So we can see our scope is to these older OSs in the fleet. My entire fleet's already on 13. So it's already on version uh, Ventura. We're just trying to get it to the latest version of Ventura. So the scopes aren't really relevant anymore. Uh, and that's important because this configuration profile and this JSON 
configuration isn't being applied to anything in production. And the reason is, is because I want the nudge script to first try and prompt the user to update through the uh, Apple way, which is, it's not system preferences anymore. Put in the comments below what it is now. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, preference policies or something. Uh, anyway, it, it, it wants it to update like it does on an iPad or, or now the new Mac OS. And in some situations that's working on tokenized volumes. And that's a key concept to know, but I don't think in, in some cases it's not working that the volume could have volume owner could have a token and it still prompts them for a username and password, which is why in the beginning of the video, we prompt them to go into self-service and use the erase install script to update the computer through the next to the next version of Ventura, even though it's already on Ventura. Now, once enough time has passed, so, you know, that's, we've already got over a hundred computers updated, you know, we'll probably get another 25. And so that will leave, you know, around 75 in this fleet on this server left to update. That is when we're going to scope this out so that when the update button is pushed on nudge, it just automatically executes the script in self-service that runs the erase install update, which is going to take a lot longer. So every client will have to spend the whole hour or so it takes to download the full OS to update it because we want to make sure it works. We know that works, but it takes the most time. And that is the key reason why I'm not scoping this out now. Uh, however, it's worth taking the time to just kind of update it while I'm in here. And we can see those scopes to those old OSs. So there's this one. And then we have another version of Nudge that we can also update that um, blurs the background. And that is a miss the deadline. They are stuck. They can't use that computer until they update. And I do use this as well. Typically I have less than 10 users and I email them all ahead of time and say, hey, you're past the deadline tomorrow or tomorrow you'll be past the deadline if you don't update your computer your screen's going to blur and you will be forced to update so we can go ahead and update this by editing it and the, the key thing is just getting these dates updated so that when this is scoped and the target os is updated that it it matches our our pathway internally and it's not a time a date that's uh, historical. So here we go. Uh, year 23, month, February, day 21. And then we can put our target OS versions. We can update those. So 13.2. And then in the second target OS version, we have 13.2.0. You'll also see that the path for the about page is a Google document, which outlines all these steps for the user. You can see that in my other videos. Um, and we can go ahead and I'm gonna remove this scope because it's not applicable anymore and just clean up this configuration profile, have no scope on it. Uh, and we'll do that right now. Save it out and go back to our other configuration profile and kind of do the same thing. Uh, we can remove the scope on it so it's a little more clear even though like I remember that all my fleets updated and I can quickly search that in inventory since we're here we might as well clean it up and just have a little bit better uh, configuration even though it's not in deployment so we're just scrolling down to look for what we need can update our date. If you have multiple of these, learn from me, just copy and paste. So I could have copied and pasted my target date from the other one. In any case, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around.